It had been a brutal first year in college. GPA had really suffered. Not good at all. He come to discover that playing athletics at that level was taking a huge toll on his body and he realized that he couldn't keep doing that. Not if he wanted to be comfortable growing older and if he wanted to get his grades up. Eventually he decided he'd just have to drop out. So he did. Dropped out of college and started working in the workplace but was discouraged by that as well didn't really find meaning and purpose there, so he started going back to school. But his academic confidence was just not there. Until after one day, one class one day, the professor of that class came up to him and said, you know, I really enjoy your writing. You are a really good writer. And with that, something rebounded. With that, a new confidence emerged, and his life was changed from that day forward. We just do not know. We do not know the power we have as human beings. You see what's on the hymn board up there? Christ the King. Today we celebrate the reign of Christ. Well, what does that mean? The reign of Christ. Well, this is what it means to me. Those of us here who have gone through the water of baptism have taken upon ourselves the name Christ. We call ourselves Christian. If Christ is to reign, then it's going to be through you and through me. It says it right there in Colossians. The inheritance of the saints. We share in that inheritance. What is that inheritance? In Christ, the fullness of God dwells. And when Christ awakens in you, and when Christ awakens in me, that fullness is revealed to the world. But, you know there had to be a but. Right? Because I'm a professional holy person and I have to kind of rein you back in here. And that's what the church has always done. Oh, but you're broken. But you're in sin. But you can never rise to the level of Christ. <coughs> Surely not. So be good little people. Go out there and sin. Come back here and get your dose of grace and everything will be all right. And we play this game over and over and over. And it's no wonder that the majority of people today say, Oh, I'm spiritual, but not religious. Not religious. <laughs> yes. And whenever I hear them, the answer in my head, I don't always say it out loud, out loud is, No, you're not. Oh, I'm spiritual, but not religious. No, you're not. A human being cannot be a fully realized spiritual person unless they are first grounded in the myth, the ethos, and the values of a long-lived faith tradition. And that can only be received and handed down through religion. Oh, I'm spiritual but not religious. Oh, how about this? Hey, I'm a gourmet chef. Did you know that? You're laughing. You're not even giving me a chance here. I am. I'm a gourmet chef, and I'm going to invite you over for a perfect dinner this evening. And I'm sure, you know, you'd spend the afternoon thinking, ooh, I wonder what delectable dish this will be that he's going to fix. And you come over and I whip out of the oven a Swanson frozen dinner. <laughs> Spiritual, but not religious. Yeah, I'm a chef, alright. When we are grounded in a religious tradition, when we have the courage, because many people sitting in this place 
And in many of the other churches where I have served, sit here and name Christian, but that's it. If you want to be religious and spiritual, it takes first commitment. A commitment to follow the path of spirituality. Secondly, two things that are very important. Awareness. Being very aware of what's going on around you. And just as important, acceptance. Acceptance of the good, the bad, the mediocre that makes up the person that I am and just lifting that up in the presence of God and saying, do with me what you can. Let your fullness dwell in me so you can be realized in the world. And the third thing, confidence. To get those first two things on the spiritual path, the third thing is confidence. Tilden Edwards says it gives you the confidence to relax into the day. What a wonderful way to say that. Much in the same way, Dr. Rosen, or Dr. Rose at Sacred Heart University gave my son, Ian, the confidence to turn his academic life around and to go from a GPA that was in the high ones to graduate with more than one honor, recognizing his academic abilities, and to go on and get a master's degree and find meaning and purpose and wholeness in life. We do not know the power we have unless we are religious and spiritual and we know the fullness of God dwells in us. And when Christ awakens, we go out that door. We change the world. 